All right, mathematicians, let's get started with section 1.5, measuring and construction of angles. Our essential question is how can you measure and classify angles? So our objectives are to name angles, measure and classify angles, identify congruent angles, use the angle addition postulate, and bisect angles. All right, so our first key point is just to refresh on how to name angles, what an angle is. We know that angles are formed when two rays come together, meeting at a common end point. And that's known as the vertex. We have different ways we can name angles. We've got the single letter that's at the vertex. That's as long as it's not being shared by another angle. You've got um, two points, one on each ray, and then you go in order. Make sure you go in the right order. The vertex must be the middle letter always or you can go the other direction. And then the other option is if it uh, has a number. If it has a number, you can also name the angle by that number. All right, let's get familiar with our different bounded regions by an angle. So you've got the exterior region, and uh, you can have points that lie on the exterior of an angle. You have um, the interior region, and you've got points that can lie on the interior. Then you've got on the angle, and then you have, so you have points that can lie on the angle. All right, let's just practice uh, naming some angles. Example one, this is not provided in your guided notes, so just add it to the notebook side of your journal, so over on the left side. All right, so here we have um, a lighthouse keeper. He's looking out at some boats in the water, so this is an aerial view as if you're in a helicopter looking down. All right, so let's just practice naming the angles that we see here. So we can start with angle J, M, K, or you can go the other direction, angle KMJ. You've also got angle KML, or you've got LMK, the other direction of the letters. Or you've got the bigger angle, which is JML, and go the other direction, LMJ. Just make sure your vertex angle is in the middle. All right, so take a moment to practice on your own, naming all the possible um, names for these three examples. So just pause the video here and try to come up with as many names as you can for each of these three. All right, so take a moment to check your answers and see if you had the right arrangement. Don't forget your angle symbols. So just check your work compared to our answers here. Bring clarifying questions to class. All right, so we'll be using our protractor in this lesson. So just getting familiar with our protractor postulate, which is just angles are measured in units called degrees. So to measure an angle, we can use this tool. You've got your inner scale and you've got your outer scale, and they go in opposite direction um, of numbers. So make sure you have one of these in class and we'll practice using them. So here's a quick visual on how to use a protractor. So you can line up one side of your ray along the edge of the protractor, and then the center for the vertex, and then if it opens towards the right, then you're using the inner scale. So we would say measure of angle A equals 20 degrees. So all of this notation is super important. When we talk about measure, we have that little M in front of our angle symbol. And don't forget your degree symbol. All right, here are some additional examples. Again, if the angles are opening towards the right, so these top two examples are both opening towards the right. One of your rays that's lined up on the edge is pointing to the right. That's one of your clues. So is this one, it's pointing to the right along this edge. So you're gonna use the inner scale and then find the number on the second side of the ray to figure out the measure. If your angle's opening to the left, so your one of your side rays, is, uh, side rays of the angle is pointing to the left, then you're gonna use the outer scale of numbers. So here's our two examples of the outer scale. All right, so let's get re-familiar with types of angles in order to classify. So you know your acutes, obtuse, and rights. Now we just need to make sure we're learning the implied statements that go with these. So I'll um, explain implied statements a little bit more in depth, but for now, this is your implied statements that goes with acute. This is your implied statement that goes with right angles. This is your implied that goes with obtuse. And this is your straight angle that goes with Sorry, this is your implied statement that goes with straight angles. And these are all listed on your implied statements pages that I gave you um, earlier in the unit. All right, so let's practice measuring and classifying angles. So let's take a look at our examples here. We have A, find the measure of angle GHK. So let's highlight. So we've got 
G H to K. So we're going to use the outer scale to measure. It looks like it's measuring at about 125 degrees. So the measure of angle GHK equals 125 degrees, which is between 90 and 180 degrees. So that implies obtuse angle. Next we have GHL. All right, next, sorry, we have JHL. Sorry, I read that wrong. All right, so we have JHL. So we're going to highlight J, H, and L. So that looks like it's straight at 90 degrees. So we're not going to use, I mean, it's 90, 90 either scale. Can't mess that up. So 90 degrees implies right angle. And then lastly, we have our angle LHK. So I'm going to highlight LHK. So we have L, H, and K. So you can subtract. We found the 90 degrees and the 125. So you can subtract those two and get 35 degrees. And since that's between 0 and 90, this implies an acute angle. All right, so we are gonna do some more construction. So copying an angle is going to be one skill that we'll need to practice. So definitely bring in your um, protractor and compass to class so that we can practice these skills together. But I'm gonna go ahead and ask that you try to practice this one on your own and just do it on the notebook paper across from the worksheet that I gave you to fill in, or your fill-in pages. Just go to your notebook page with the lines and just practice. Pause the video here, follow these steps, and try it on your own. All right, let's do a quick moment to define congruent angles. So we say that two angles are congruent if and only if their measures are equal. We'll get more familiar with this phrase, if and only if, in the unit two. But in other words, we can say if two angles are congruent angles, then their measures are equal. So here's what we need to understand. Angles um, as objects have congruence. So this is our notation. Measurements are equal. So this is our notation. And we can switch that. So again, if measurements are equal, this is going to imply congruence. So our measure of angle A is equal to 112 degrees. So we can say if angle A is congruent to angle B, then the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. Switch, if measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, then angle A is congruent to angle B. So here we can say that congruent angles implies equal to measured angles, and we can also go the other direction and say that equal to measured angles implies congruent angles. All right, another vocabulary word, adjacent angles. These are two angles with a common vertex and a common side, but no common interior points. So some examples from this picture, we've got angle one and angle two. So this angle and this angle are adjacent, just like angle two and angle three. So they're side by side, in other words. So three and four are adjacent, one and four are adjacent. But two and four are not. One and three are not. So that leads us to understand the angle addition postulate, which is another key point. Our angle addition postulate, remember postulates are statements we can accept as truth without proof. So this one's similar to the segment addition postulate, except now we're dealing with angles. So when you have two angles that are adjacent, so side by side, so here we have two angles side by side. When we add them together, it's going to equal the bigger angle. So adjacent angles implies angle-angle postulate. So we can set up an angle addition postulate statement similar to when we set up segment addition postulate statements. Now we're dealing with measures of angles. So let's practice. All right, so let's practice the angle addition postulate here. So let's first set up our angle addition postulate statement with our three angles. Remember the big angle and then we have the two smaller angles. So the two smaller angles equal, added together equal the bigger angle. Then we substitute our value, so 37 plus 21. So the measure of angle ABC is equal to 58 degrees. Let's take a look at our second one here. Again, set up your angle addition postulate statement. So the big angle, so angle RST is equal to the measure of angle RSB plus the measure of angle VST. Substitute what you know. Use your algebra skills, solve for the unknown. So here we have then measure of angle RSV is equal to 42 degrees. All right, let's apply the angle addition postulate to um, a situation that might require some algebra. 
So notice our two angles have expressions as their labels. Still, our steps are to set up using your angle addition postulate. We're going to solve for x first. So our angle addition postulate allows us to write out measure of angle LKN equals measure of angle LKM plus the measure of angle MKN. Next, we would substitute what we know, so all our expressions get added in. Combine like terms. Use your algebra skills here to solve for x. So that's going to be your very first step, is solving for x after you substitute. So now that we know uh, measure of, oh, sorry, x is 23. So our next step then is to evaluate the given expressions when x equals 23. Go back to reread your original prompt to see what you're trying to figure out because sometimes we can lose track in all of our steps in our work as to what our objective is. So I always like to just refresh, oh yeah, we're trying to find the angle measures. I found x, but that's not what it's asking me to do. So now I'm having to go in and substitute my x's for my expression. So the first one will be 2x plus 10. So I substitute 23 for x. I get 56 degrees for that first angle. And then for the second angle, mkn, substitute 23, I get 89 degrees. So the measure of angle LKM is 56 degrees, and the measure of angle MKN is equal to 89 degrees. All right, key point number three are angle bisectors. So we had segment bisectors in a previous lesson. Now we have angle bisectors. So in similar fashion, an angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two angles that are congruent. So in this figure, ray YW is bisecting angle XYZ. So we can say that angle XYW is congruent to angle ZYW. So we have congruent angles. So a ray divides an angle in half, two equal parts. You can use an, a compass and a straight edge to bisect an angle. So we'll look at a construction here in a minute. There are other objects that can um, bisect an angle. So we have lines that can bisect angles, and we also have segments that can bisect angles. So add these examples in your notes. You can go to your extra space on the left side of your journal and add in these extra examples. And then we have our implied statement, which says angle bisector implies two congruent adjacent angles. All right, here we have our construction steps for bisecting an angle. So go ahead and pause the video here try to follow these steps and try it on your own and we will definitely clarify and work on this together so bring your tools. Alright so example five we want to use a bisector to find angle measures. So here are you given that ray QS bisects angle PQR and we know that the measure of angle PQS equals 24 degrees. So we're asked to find the measure of PQR. Notice there's no picture. So one thing that you'll need to understand is to be able to look at this text with all the notations, geom geometric notations and vocabulary words to actually draw a picture. So take a moment to do that. So draw one big triangle, uh, sorry, one big angle and then draw a ray through the middle. Label all your points similar to this image here. So something like this is what you should have come up with. It didn't have to exactly look like this, but this is good. And then what we want to do after we draw the diagram is then because ray QS bisects angle PQR, that means we can conclude that these two smaller angles are equal in measure. So if the measure of angle PQS is 24 degrees, then angle, measure of angle RQS is also 24 degrees. So now we can use the angle addition postulate to find the measure of PQR. So PQR is the bigger angle, so we're ultimately trying to figure out this bigger angle. So we substitute 24 degrees for each of the angles, so measure of angle PQR is equal to 48 degrees. All right, so it's your turn to try these on your own and bring them into class. We will discuss, go over them, clarify any questions you might have. Lots of vocabulary, lots of new information. So get ready to practice and clarify. All right, that's all for angles and measuring and constructing. So get ready to practice. I'll see you in class. I'm going to go ride some roller coasters. Signing out.